As always, this episode is sponsored by my go-to stop for all things makeup, Revlon. Hey everybody, I'm Ashley Graham and this is Pretty Big Deal, where confidence is key. Every episode, I get to pick the brains of brilliant, inspiring, honest, new and old friends who are a pretty big deal. Today, we are talking to the unstoppable Liza Koshy. Liza is an internet sensation turned actress, director, and has made Forbes 30 Under 30 list twice. In 2019, she was named one of Time Magazine's most influential people on the internet. Y'all, she's only 23. How oh, are you? Thank you. I've been staring see. at the video playback of you backstage talking to yourself, and I was like, I can, I can help her. I can go sit there and talk to her. Oh my gosh, which video? <laughs> There's like a little playback of you being like, Oh, <laughs> oh in Video Village. <laughs> yes. video I know. Village. I know. I was watching you, girl. Could you hear me? No, I couldn't hear you. Oh. I just saw you like. Oh yeah, that was like my like, hi, if you want to give me money <laughs> to pay for all of this. Oh, your sponsors? Yes. <laughs> yes. She's like, I'm uh, mid-contraction right now, but here are our sponsors. <laughs> oh my God, I know you know a thing or two about sponsors on YouTube. Ooh, child girl, I know. Right? All the FTC guidelines, the oh legalities, I see? know these things. you're saying things I don't even know about. <laughs> I have people for that. I know, I have people that tell me those words. I don't know what they mean. Oh my gosh. Yeah. When did you realize that like you had to make it a business? Because I, like, I didn't know that like there was so much business behind yeah. all of this. I was I was always so curious. I'm like, oh, YouTube. Yeah. How do you make money? Oh, the YouTubes, I know. But then they talk about how much money you guys make. It can't because of the ads that play on the videos yeah. or right before the videos. Right. And then you also have like sponsors that reach out and they're like, hey, if you integrate our brand into your brand, because yes. essentially as a person on YouTube, you become a brand. Yes. So then you're your own name and then there's like brand integrations. It's wild. It's a it wild is really world. wild. Yeah, but welcome to it. Hello. I feel very welcome. <laughs> I feel the, the, oh, look at the glasses. I know, gone. sorry. Are, are you going to wear real? them? No. Are they subscription? Subscription? They're subscription or prescription? Or pres ah! Damn, she's been on YouTube for a while. This is called pregnancy <laughs> brain. No, yesterday I almost made a fool of myself in front of Anna Wintour and I forgot the word judge on TV what? or on, on stage. And I was like looking at her and I was like, I'm supposed to say a word. I'm supposed to say a word. And then my friend Paloma goes, I'm a judge. I'm a judge. And I was like, <laughs> Anna hired me for one thing. One I thing. I know a thing or two about embarrassing myself in front of Anna. I know, right? I know you do. Um, I know you do. <laughs> I totally want to talk about it. Let's talk We're about gonna it. We're going to get there. Okay, okay, okay. We'll build up. Okay, so, okay, but first, like, off, like, the cuff, yeah. random question. Tell me anything. Ask me. Um, if you could change your Wikipedia, oh, what would it say? I'm the one who wrote it, so I would change Oh, for thing. real? No, I'm just kidding. No. Oh. <laughs> I was like, how do you get that? Because I heard that, like, if you want to change a fact, you have to, you have, to have, like, three articles. Oh. No, you have to have, like, three articles saying the same exact fact about you, and you have to, like, submit it in order to change your Wikipedia. I don't no know if way. that's real. What? Just what I heard. Okay, I will write three articles then, and <laughs> then submit for the change. Wait, <laughs> so what would you change about your Wikipedia? I actually haven't read my Wikipedia. Really? I'm really good at not reading things about me that I haven't written myself. So, hmm. girl, don't look at the comments, because they will tell you things about yourself you ain't know. <laughs> Wait, so yeah. you don't read comments? I try not to read comments. On YouTube, Instagram, social, On Twitter? Most things. Instagram I find to be a very positive place. YouTube is like... It's constructive and Twitter is opinionated. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> so I just look at that and I'm like, okay, I know places to go where I need a little bit of my soul fed from people who appreciate my work. And then I'm like, okay, cool. I know where to avoid and not like dive and spiral, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Which I want to talk about spiraling. Yeah. And I feel like there's just so much depth to you that <laughs> I'm really excited to talk about. That was the sweetest thing anybody's ever said to me. No really? Said there's so oh. much depth. There is. There's lots of depth. Thank for you. a very small person, there's a lot of depth in there. Thank you. I'm overcompensating for my stature. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how old are you? I'm 23. Oh, you're a baby. <laughs> baby. You're a little you're a baby. Congratulations. Yeah. I haven't oh. properly congratulated no, you. Thank you. You looked amazing on Halloween, by the way. The oh latex. My. I don't Knocked know how much up baby Jessica powder. Rabbit. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, it's just the way we went. It was bump. It was um, bump. But let's start in the beginning. You were on Vine. I was on Vine. And then you went piece. to YouTube. I did. And your dad did not get it. My dad did not get it. And so <laughs> the day he got it, when I was ironically on a college tour, and Ooh. yeah, I was checking out places since my junior year in high school. Um, I think I was checking out Emory University. Go Emory, I don't know that, I didn't go there. Okay. But <laughs> well, you didn't really go to college. Anyway. I did not really go to college. <laughs> I went for one year and I do not remember it. it was, <laughs> 
on. <laughs> um, but I went to a college tour, and it wasn't until like another tour I started following our tour, and were whispering behind us, and my dad was wondering like what's going on. Um, and then they walked up to me and said, "Hey, we recognize you from your videos. Can we take a picture with you?" And then like 15 kids took pictures with me, and it was amazing. 15? That's a lot. It was a, it was a group. Yeah, it was like a group of like high school kids my age who were recognizing me from my work online, and I didn't even realize it was work at the time. It was just like my videos and right. fun. And and my dad was like, "What is this? What is she doing? Why was I making her delete followers?" <laughs> yes, he did, girl. Delete? How can you yes, delete you followers? You have to go through and block each person and then unblock them. At least that was the 2015 way. Oh, that's so <laughs> yeah. funny. Instagram's made How many update. subscribers did you have at the time? I think I had like 300,000 on Vine. Jeez, that's yeah. a lot. It was, it was a while. To think that it was just like, oh, nobody knows me. No, and then walk around yeah. and then have people come up to me and be like, ooga booga. And yeah. my dad's like, what? And then he decided from then on out, like, continue to make videos. It's obviously having some sort of impact. I don't know if it's a positive one, but I try. Um, and... I think it's positive. That's why I had you on Pretty Big Deal. <laughs> it's no big deal, but it's just a huge deal. I'm here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh, please. So, wait, but then your dad was like, okay, but I want you to go to college. Then dad said, okay, I want you to go to college. Okay. And I went for one year at the <laughs> University of Houston. Go Cougs. And... Then I took a gap year because my dad picked me up from the airport and said, do you feel like you need to move out to Los Angeles? And being- He the, opened the door. He opened the door. Being the youngest of three, he was like, well, we have other two, get this one out. And I flew out to LA, took a gap year off of school, and now it's been gap years. Wow, mm -hmm. do you feel like when you were in that first year of college that content was just kind of ruling your life and it wasn't really about studying anyways? It wasn't about studying. It was about other things, for sure. But partying? I, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay. We can say I partied hardy. <laughs> oh, I partied hardy. Girl. It's like, I don't want to say you have to get it out of your system. I, but, but I did. Yeah. I, <laughs> I got it out of my system. Am I glad I got it out of my system? I just don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think a little bit's coming out every now and then. <laughs> a little bit came out this past Halloween, too. <laughs> um, <laughs> there might have been a twerking Anna Wintour at a party at one point. Yes. I love that you I were dressed as Anna Wintour. <laughs> I had to. I had to do her down. I mean, um, did she reach out and say no? Okay, <laughs> I think she blocked me. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> right, she, she doesn't have Instagram, so it's okay. she doesn't. <laughs> um, but I, I did. I got a little bit out of my system, and then and then continued on making videos once I moved out to LA, and that's when I got on YouTube. Was and then that was, was it. Yeah. Was that scary? Just like kind of going in and and not knowing much, but yeah. I mean, okay. There, there's the other thing about Vine. Like Vine yeah. just went away, and then dude disappeared. Everybody's resumes. Did that freak you out when Vine left, or it, were you already making the transition into YouTube? I was making that transition onto YouTube, so I felt like I had that little like. You were one of the lucky ones. I was. I was lucky. Oh, I'm so lucky. Um, but I had that to fall back on because I had been building that platform, right? Um, and had been making characters on there, so. Yeah. And you talk about, what's it called, your bio and Instagram? Subscription? No. Prescription? No. So much prescriptions <laughs> and subscriptions. <laughs> but the in bio? Instagram, you say that you're the little brown girl with big dreams. Yeah. And I want to talk to you about the importance of representation. Yes, ma'am. So what does that mean for you? It's exciting for me because I come from a mixed background. Okay. So my dad is um, Indian. He's from Kerala which is a little tip of India, oh. um, very have southern India. There? Yes, I have. Oh, cool. My grandmother lives there. I call her Amachi for the culture. Uh, Amachi. Um, Amachi, yes. That means Cute. grandmother in uh, Malayalam, which is the, you're like, did you just sneeze? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's like the native tongue of my dad. Okay. Um, and so she is 97 years old oh, living in Kerala, India. If you want to live forever, girl, drink a turmeric latte every day. You are sick. Right? Yes. She I has turmeric all the time. And there's probably meal. good quality food. There's no yeah. crap in the food. No, there's no crap no, in the food. We can get into that another time, <laughs> another podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but everything's in the backyard, like fresh gingers growing. Like it's a beautiful, like flourishing, lush place. Oh. Um, so if you have a chance to go, go. And then mom is? Mom is of German background. Okay. And I just found out because my mom's sister did a Ancestry.com little DNA test. And? Found out I'm 6% Jewish. 6%? <laughs> yeah. I think I have 3% Jewish Do in you? me. Yeah. It didn't make sense to me. No? But I have a lot of German and Russian in me. Okay, so my mom's German background. Yeah. And, then and a little Jewish. Yes. Isn't <laughs> yeah. that funny? Yeah. I know. Yeah, okay, the mix. So the representation from for yeah. you is like, you, what, what is it for you? For me, it's being, it's coming from just a very mixed background and wanting to make sure that like, you know, mixed kids and, and kind of like that that culture, which is why I'm so appreciative of Tracy Ellis Ross and like Mixed-ish, because that's a story that like I've always been excited to tell and I'm excited to see that on the screen for anybody who's kind of having their own like 
culture identity crisis of sorts yeah. growing up because I, being from Houston, um, is so diverse itself that like, where did I belong was a question that I was constantly asking myself. And I think we all do still, even we in, do. into adulthood. But um, as a kid in middle school, um, in high school, I was really trying to figure out, do I hang out with Indian kids? Or no, I wasn't Indian enough. Do I hang out with the white kids? No, I'm not white enough. No, I'm brown and this and that. How did your mom and dad raise you? I think more so Indian actually because I had Indian relatives in Texas, whereas I had like 17 Indian relatives in Texas, whereas my mom had two Got in it. Virginia. So that was the bigger influence for you. Yeah, so I, I claim myself to be brown because I am. Yes. And then, and then um, a lot of people just think I'm kind of anything. I get Puerto Rican a I lot. didn't know. You didn't know? I had no idea. Surprise, there yeah. it is. Yeah, so I'm, I'm brown because of the Indian, but a lot of people think I'm Puerto Rican or Same girl. Hispanic, and then I speak Spanish because of Texas. It's wild. Same girl. Wild. What's, your, what's your ethnic background? White. <laughs> She's white. <laughs> <laughs> really? Seriously, Just, I know. There's uh, People ask me all the time. You white. <laughs> <laughs> I love where this is going, but just give me two seconds. Getting our groceries delivered has always been the ideal option, but it can also be wildly expensive. But not with Thrive Market. Thrive Market has an easy to use app with all our favorite obscure healthy snacks. Hello! And it's in between 25 and 50% off traditional retail prices. Members receive those amazing offers, plus all the orders that are over $49 are shipped free and delivered within two to three days. So you never have to feel guilty about going overboard. Holler! And it takes all the hassle out of healthy living. And I can come home from a long day and find a lovely box like this one. It's also an easy way for us to try new things like roasted dandelion root tea. Hello. I couldn't recommend this box enough. Head to thrivemarket.com slash pretty big deal to unlock 25% off and a 30 day free trial. Don't miss this limited time offer to check out Thrive Market today. Now let's get back to the show. Um, okay, so let's talk about all the characters that you've created because yeah. it's like you created these characters and I think you've said that you needed them. I did. They were figures in your life that you felt like there was there was parts of you that were missing yep. and you were maybe yearning for. Yeah. And you said, you know what, I'm going to create characters. Can you tell me about that? I and did. like, where did that come from? I know. It was all like laying in my subconscious dormant and I did not know what I was doing until... I went to a beautiful place called Therapy. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Need it. And figured out what I was doing. And I was kind of like compartmentalizing in these different characters for myself and figuring out like, okay, I needed, I wanted and craved the confidence, mm -hmm. which is what I wanted to go out into everyday life with just the utmost confident um, persona. And I created that persona and his name was Jet and he had a bowl cut and he was great at every damn sport. I've seen Jeff But before. he was awful. You've seen him? No, I mean on your YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God, it's just weird that you've seen it. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, <laughs> really? Those are, those are private home videos. You ain't supposed to see that. No, yeah. but no, but like your 73 questions. Yeah, you're right. You're, yeah, you're right. I mean, we've met Jet. Well, you've met Jet. <laughs> he's um, very, um, very handsome. I know. He's, ha he's handsome. He also <laughs> knows himself very well. He's very, Sexual. <laughs> he's, he's a confident ass man. He is. He is, but. So how, where did that come from, that for, you need a jet? For me, it came from like, I just, I want to feel like, even if I'm not so good at it, which I was obviously not good at being this athlete of sorts or being this like guy of sorts, that he was just fully believed that he was the utmost confident person in the room, that he just believed in his power and believed in himself, even if he wasn't doing everything right. And so for me, that was like creating a character that I wanted to portray and like tap into uh, mentally, spiritually, emotionally for myself that like, so what? Not everything has to be perfect or right. Mm. I don't have to be great at it all, but I'm going to tell myself that I can, therefore I will be. So Just, how do you tap yeah. into Jet without putting on the glasses and the wig? Mm. And and because I mean that's how I know Jet, right? Yeah. That's how the world knows Jet. <laughs> but how do you bring that into Liza into the everyday world? That's me standing in the shower and repeating positive affirmations to myself. <laughs> <laughs> what are your affirmations? Oh, there are many. Um, but like, just like, 
I am and I can and I see the love and I see the God in others mm. um, and I and I just hope that they can see that love in me mm. but if not regardless I'm going to still believe in them and mm. what they have to offer mm -hmm. um, but it's minor like, I am bold I am brilliant I am beautiful oh, I know B -B -B. yes I was just like those were like the simple things that I needed when I was 18 yes but you know you just you grow and things evolve and yeah affirmations change that's yeah. why I was curious what yours were yeah you have another character that you create too I did. I have. Um, oh, did I don't do? Need, oh, still have them. <laughs> They're with me all the time. <laughs> They're with me all the time. Um, Helga. Oh, she yes, was, Helga. Helga, yes. Yeah. <laughs> she was um, my maternal character because I didn't have my mom with me out in LA. Oh. So I created her to kind of be this like parental figure of sorts that was like reprimanding and like thought she was right too all the time too, or like had this alternative way of doing things that she was like, no, it can be done this way. Like that. <laughs> so did they just like come out in moments where you were like, okay, I know I need to be told about myself and then Helga would come and she would tell you about yes. you. Yes, she was like the other perspective. And you're you about know? to walk into like a meeting and you're like, I am Jet, I can do anything. <laughs> like, would you like have those conversations out loud with yourself? I did them in public bathrooms all the time. People would hear them <laughs> as soon as I walked into that meeting. This um, is your Sasha Fierce. This is my, I call it Sausage Fierce. <laughs> and it's the real off-brand version. I always love that Beyonce told us about Sasha Fierce because we don't know a ton about her, but no. just to know that. Yeah, that we all have, right? <laughs> that we all have this different way of like coping and tapping into the, mm -hmm. our powers. So, did you you create a Jet and Holga, uh -huh. and you create and you also brought them to YouTube? I did, but through just bringing those characters, you were also creating yeah. so much on YouTube. Yeah, and you were the fastest growing YouTuber. Wild ever. What? <laughs> At that time, I think. I don't think I am anymore. I don't know. I don't know. It, the social media has just like changed. Like, I don't the, know. Like virality of everything has changed. But, but was... what did that feel like in the moment? How it is right now. Like hard to, <laughs> <laughs> hard to put into words. Were you like, kind of like, why me? Like, yeah. Oh, Who am I? Girl, imposter syndrome was mm. real. Like it felt like, why is this happening to me? And then to also see like, outside comments saying, why is this happening to her? to her? But it was mostly like love and positivity that I was surrounded by, but it was it was like, whoa, hold on, what, what did I do? Wait, why y'all, y'all tripping? Because like, it was 10 million followers. Yeah. You had posted every Wednesday for mm -hmm. five years. Mm -hmm. That sounds- Eight. Three years, don't age me, girl. Was it three years? Three years, mm -hmm. well, two and a half. I know you're a young girl, she's Louise. But that must have taken a mental and physical yeah. toll on you. It did. It was just like the cranking and need for content. What happened? What made you sh want to shut down? It was more so that I got- Well, shut down social media, not- Yeah. You don't want to shut down yeah, yeah, mentally. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't want to shut down mentally, but I felt myself getting to a place where I wasn't believing in myself anymore, which mm -hmm. is why I didn't want to reach that shutdown point. And I didn't want to say, oh, I'm taking a break, because I didn't know exactly what the plan was. And I was looking for an answer. I said, okay, I'm going to take a break for a week. I'm going to take a break for uh, a month. I'm going to take a break for a year. And it became like a year and a half or so. And I kept trying to look for an answer as to what I'm meant to do, what am I supposed to do. I love making videos, but now I'm making, you know, bigger productions with Lies on Demand, with, um, you know, the different shows and movies that I've been a part of and hosting. And I was trying to figure out what's my purpose? Like, what am I supposed to do here? And I still don't have an answer. Mm. But it's becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable that mm. I've found a lot of, like, peace in. Mm. Um, but it was confusing. And I, I know I might have let down my audience in the sense that, like, you... You promised this content every week, and now where it at now? Did you have FOMO walking into like not being able to provide content, or was it anxiety ridden? It got there a little bit, but I still c kept creating content in different ways. Okay. So it was more so for me, like I can't do this in my living room by myself anymore because I got spoiled with having other productions and having other people and having other creatives. It wasn't like you shut down. No, did not shut down. Okay. So went into like a writer's room and started bouncing around ideas and got so excited to work with other people. I was like, other people think like this too? Ah, oh, shit. And so I got so thrilled to work with other people that that's what I fell into is creating a show on YouTube, a 22 minute long 10 episode show that's now in its second season. That's so incredibly <laughs> successful. <laughs> Thank you. And Thank in you. its second season, the first Thank episode you. that came out, it was the yeah. most viewed YouTube 
premium show Where ever. Where the headlines say? Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> it like, I. It was. It no, was it was. I know it was. <laughs> I don't have to read my cards to know that. <laughs> Brush them off. Um, it was <laughs> the most. That's amazing brilliant. success right yeah, there. Thank you, thank you. So it makes me happy that like, hey, that little break from that other content allowed right. me to make this content that other people enjoy too, which is so. Exciting. Liza on demand. You wrote it. I helped write it. Okay. Well, helped conceptualize it more so. Those are from the brilliant minds of Deborah Kaplan and Harriet Elfont. Okay. That, do you remember Can't Hardly Wait or yes. Josie and the Pussycats? Yes, Cats? yes. That's them. Cool. That's my parents. Yeah, yeah. So they cool. helped write and conceptualize And you're directing? The world. I did. I directed this season. You directed all season two? No, no, not all season. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, her eyes got big. I know. <laughs> her eyes got big. Don't put words in her mouth. <laughs> one, one episode. How did it go? Um, it was amazing. It was yeah. a rom-com episode, so I had to direct my own kiss. Huh? Wait, yeah. did you direct yourself naked? You didn't do that one. I did not do that okay, one. Okay, got it. Okay, the I kiss. Like, thank, the kiss. Thank God. I mean, that because I was kind do. of aggressive. It the was. naked all over LA. I was I, I was straight up barefoot in downtown. I ain't catch nothing. I'm good. You, yeah. I mean, barefoot's yeah. one. People think it's gross, but nah, nah. I'm from the country, girl. <laughs> we barefoot all the time. Texas streets. <laughs> come on. Come on. So what was it like directing yourself? It was wild because you have to like give a performance while also watching somebody else give theirs. And so you're trying to do your best to like be your best, but also trying to make sure that they're doing everything you want them to so the story goes well. It was it was hard. It is a hard thing to do. I want to continue directing, but other things that I'm not in. Got and it. And that I have clothes on. Because now you're in the Director's Guild. I am. Me and Sean Ryan's in the same club. Wow, what does uh -huh. that mean to you? That means thank you to everybody before me who helped me get in and paved mm -hmm. that path so that I could literally just walk up in the club mm -hmm. and cheers them. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of like Deborah Kaplan herself um, fought to basically be heard and have her story told as a woman and have female driven stories be told in Hollywood. And we were so. talking about females being a part mm -hmm. of behind the scenes before yeah. we started rolling and it was, it's, just, it's important. Yeah, and we had like a woman behind the camera on Lies On Demand and made it all the more comfortable to be naked on camera. <laughs> exactly, Yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you and I have something in common. We've mm -hmm. both been to the Met. Yes, we are. That's where we met. I Met. know. Yeah. Your first year, you were hosting the red carpet. Yeah. And then I saw you the second year, and yes. it was like, oh, fam, what's yeah. up? <laughs> yes. That's why I was so happy the next year. People were like, oh, I know you. Yeah. Well, because honestly, Liza, you make everybody feel so comfortable. That's. And you have this, like, I don't know, you just, you're best friend vibes. Thanks. That's it. That's, hey. as, that's as simple as I can make it feel. So we're going out for drinks after yeah. this, though. Okay. Yeah. How did that come about? Was it from your spoof of 73 Questions? It was from my spoof of 73 Questions. Oh my gosh! That spoof led to the actual 73 Questions that I did. Where Which was really good. They lit you so well. They lit me well, girl. Wow. <laughs> Y'all doing they... you justice here, too. I'm just No, saying. don't worry. Do you see these lights? Yeah. <laughs> Got that golden underglow. Yeah. Also, we're going to talk about your skin. Oh, thank you. It's a little messed up from Halloween. Oh, right shut now. up! It's Are you kidding me? Special. Messed up. Th well, th well, thank you. You like five feet away right now, so you're getting the good. Don't come closer. <laughs> how much? <laughs> how much foundation up. you got on, girl? <laughs> <laughs> Three layers. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the mat. The mat was wild. What was your first experience like? My first experience was like a kid with their lunch tray in middle school, trying to figure out where to sit, kind of yes. thing. Um, because the mat is one of the biggest deals <laughs> yeah. of fashion. Yes. It's, the Oscars of fashion. Huge. It's the Grammys it's of fashion. I mean, yeah. it's a big deal. And then to like get invited by Anna Wintour, it's like yeah. an even bigger. Massive. Oh my God. It so who wild. dressed you for your first year? My first year was Alessandria Rich. Okay. I think. Okay. Shut up. And then my second year was Balmain. Oh, Olivier. oh cool. Yeah. Wait, which one was like your arm stuff? That was that was this past year. Okay, got 2019. It. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like a little. It felt like I was one of those like saloon doors, yes. and I was like letting people yes. in. Um, but How yeah, did you go to the bathroom. You looked amazing, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I loved this last met. Did you? Oh my god, it was Dapper so fun. Dan. I know it was. Killed it on you. I know it was. It was amazing. But and how was, do you prep for something like that? That was the very first year. I had no idea how to prep. I just studied everybody. I went and looked at their Twitters. What was the last thing they said? Like, mm. when we pick up on some kind of information when they come up here. Um, but it's mainly just, like, welcoming them in and asking them how they're excited to be here because it's huge. Um, but I had a binder, and I had my go-to Vogue girl who stood next to me and, like, helped me out with some of the designers and making sure I knew who oh, was Oh, yeah. Doing. No, there's always someone there just, like, whispering in your ear. Yeah. Like Anne Hathaway in... Um, <laughs> yes. What's that movie Devil called? Devil Friday. for Friday, yeah. <laughs> so I had my little Anne next to me. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's just a lot of people. It is. Are you going to go this year, you think? Uh, 
this coming year? I'm looking direct down the camera and I'm asking Anna right now because I know she watches your podcast. <laughs> I just love that Anna adores you, though. If she does, I'm so happy. Oh, no. You're Vogue approved, Anna approved. You've been to the Met twice now. Prayers. The um, manifestation works. Lena Dunham told me it took her seven years to get a plus one. So I told my husband, I was like, if you can hold in there for another four years, <laughs> maybe you can come in We're there with in. me. What I was talking about in the beginning about the depth of Liza, because oh. I think that there is so much to you where, you know, you, bro you broke off of YouTube, you started doing something behind the scenes, you weren't feeding the fans, you weren't just yeah. like giving people what they wanted yeah. constantly, which is a big deal because I think sometimes, you know, being having a lot of followers on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you sometimes wake up thinking about your fans. You sometimes wake up thinking about the content and it yeah. can be, it can make you anxious. It can yeah. make you spiral. Yep. And I want to know like what effect did it truly have on you and yeah. your psyche every morning? For me, it was more so fulfilling an expectation of what people had of me. Because I kind of told them, and I've been using this metaphor a little bit, but I've been telling them for two years what to expect from me in terms of like characters, content, in terms of like even an Instagram theme. Mm -hmm. And I kind of built this definition around myself. And for a while that definition fit who Liza was. And then as I started to just grow and evolve and have different experiences and travel and be closer with my family and closer with my faith, it kind of evolved just mm -hmm. as just life does. Like, oh, she's changed. Well, damn right she has. And you she's evolved, evolved <laughs> actually. Yeah. And you're so 23, you're supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. In a constant state. I think we're all in a constant state of like evolution um, for ourselves, hopefully. And that for me was rewriting that definition and what to expect from me. And now I've relieved myself of that, like, pressure of sorts, feeling like, oh, I have to be this or I have to say that in order to be me, because that's not a way to live. What makes you feel centered in this crazy mess of social media and yeah. having to perform and give content? Sitting on a beige couch and speaking to someone with the most soothing voice of all <laughs> podcasts. <laughs> Girl, you even matched the color coding of the couch. I didn't know. I know, know this is ridiculous, they... right? I'm blending in. I'm matching the, the rug, and I didn't even mean to. <laughs> you so won't lay down. Out. I might. I might. I'll blend right in. You won't see me. But um, you keep talking about your faith. Are you I a do. Christian? I am. Yeah, Christian same. background. Same. Yeah? Yeah, I grew up Southern Baptist. Oh. I had to figure that whole thing out, because then when I moved to New York, I was like, wait, why am I? Why do I supposed to be a Christian? Because yeah. my mom and dad said I was. Yeah. And I went on my own discovery. I was like, okay, no, why do I want to go to church? Why do I believe in God? Oh, yeah. Who is he to me? Who am I to him? Hmm. And it feels like there might have been some kind of same discovery that you went through as well. A little bit too. So I was raised um, Mennonite. Oh my God, my mom was raised Mennonite. No way. Yes. We are related. That's you weird. Are no, no, we are. <laughs> we might be. No, that's the weird. That's, that is weird. German you know, Mennonite. German Mennonite, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like No, but ankles. Mennonite is really, I mean, like my mom couldn't wear pants yeah. in front of my grandfather. Oh, wow. And like her skirts had to be below the knee mm -hmm. and like there's buns. I don't know if you guys had to wear buns and bonnets and stuff. My but. grandmother did, but it was a little less strict in that sense. But it was my grandmother's mother that yeah. was like very strictly so Mennonite. Yeah. So you had to go through a self-discovery of like, what yeah. does it mean to be Mennonite? Yeah. And like there's like a saying that my grandpa sings. Um, I could have danced all night, but I'm a Mennonite. <laughs> like you cannot you dance. Can't dance. You cannot wear, you cannot show your kneecaps. Yes. And I'm over here dancing on my kneecaps. And you're also so. naked and it's on demand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I'm just... naked in a lot of magazines. My grandma <laughs> did not approve. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's wild. I'm going against the, the culture that I was raised in, but uh, that's how change happens. <laughs> right. Yeah. But do you have like a moral compass that you kind of live your life yeah. by? Um, more so just co connecting and making sure that, that I'm fueling that connection with my faith and that I'm going to, I do actually go to a church, Mosaic Church. Oh, I've been yeah. there. That's yeah. a great church. It's wonderful. And like just to have that like sense of community and mm -hmm. people who are just mm -hmm. kind of looking and striving towards the same goals or things. There yeah. really is a sense of community when yeah. it comes to church. Too, Something to else I love is that you've got this Okay, I'm gonna mess up the name. Go, do it, butcher it. C'est moi. No, you soi. did not. Oh, I did you not. You said it perfectly. C'est soi. Yes, oh. it's c'est soi. It's c'est soi. You no. clean your face with c'est soi. Et vous vous couchez, c'est moi. Vous uh, <laughs> voulez vous coucher, c'est moi, c'est soi. <laughs> I like said that to somebody and then found out you should never say that yeah, to somebody. Yeah, because you're asking for a threesome. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> wow, represent. Right? Right? <laughs> Any Mennonite listening right now, they're getting a kick out of that. They're like, should I be listening to this? <laughs> I'm back I, don't I, love radio right now. I love it. <laughs> but you're a beauty ambassador. Yes. So tell me about that partnership. Long time personal goal of mine was to have like some kind of skincare or makeup or beauty because I've always been so interested in it, having been like a performer from a young age and having to wear makeup. Mm. And so that was always of interest to me. And then I also had eczema and meloska really? and all types of skin rashes on your face, on my face growing up. And it was something I never really shared because I was too busy making like sketch videos and things like that instead of like vlogs where I shared my dreams and goals. Wow. So for me, this is like stepping into that and being so excited about it. So yeah. this product works for you? This product works. Period. Wow. I, I have handed it out to my family and friends, and it's like, it's vegan, it's cruelty free, it's also EWG verified. What is that? Which is, you're like, you're saying all the FTC <laughs> guidelines, right? EWG. <laughs> EWG, I don't know what the acronym stands for. I should That's okay. That. But if you want to go home and look up what EWG is, <laughs> it's EWG free. EWG free. <laughs> um, verified, which means that it's, it's basically, it, that's a really hard verification to get. It's an amazing company and it's good humans behind it. And oh, just that's like, important. I refuse to work with any bad humans. So anything I do work with is just morally aligned with me. And I'm excited to promote them because they're dope. That's really important. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Well, <laughs> so Lies on Demand is doing incredible. Yeah, man, I'm proud. And are we going into proud. season three? I'm gonna look into the camera again and ask for a season three, please. <laughs> <laughs> I would love a season three. And if so, then I will make sure to write a script in its entirety, just me on my own, and also direct that script too. That's the plan. I would love to do that. Wow. Yeah. So I'm really, I'm really fingers crossed for it. Okay, season so three. that's coming up. What yeah. else is coming up for Miss Liza Koshe? I was a part of a movie recently. Which in, one? It's called Work It. It's gonna be on Netflix. It's uh, not out yet? Not out yet. We'll see. And what are you doing? I'm dancing. Wait, because you're <laughs> an incredible dancer. All right, thank you. <laughs> That's very sweet of you. Did you say. take dance classes or is this just like all natural? This is from dance classes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I ain't gonna take credit. I was, wasn't born this way. <laughs> I really love watching your videos because they make me feel so hyped. <laughs> thank they you. do. I'm like, you know what? I'm getting out of bed. Yo. I'm gonna dance too. I'm not gonna look as cute, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. You're an inspiration. I will replace that label of host, actress, model with. <laughs> A hype woman. Yes! I'm just a hype ass woman. That's what I'll take. <laughs> thank you for coming on Pretty Big Deal. You You're for, so sweet. Thank you for having me. This is a huge deal to me. So oh. like, thank you for letting me sit in your presence in all the neutral color tones. That's what we do. But I do have one more thing. <laughs> What's that? So what we do at the end of every Pretty Big Deal, what we do at the end, uh, did you like that? I was like, <laughs> yeah, I did. Right up, right up. She is human. At the end of every Pretty Big Deal, we do a lightning round, live boldly lightning round, and you just have to answer the question. Okay, go, come at me. All right, so the last pretty penny you spent. Ooh, pretty penny. Puppy. You got a puppy? I got a puppy. Wait, have you, you introduced the puppy? Someone? No, not yet, but I'm about to today on Instagram. Oh. <laughs> Did you bring it? I did not bring okay, it. Okay, that's fine. She's a little, she's a little nervous. She's a, oh, a she's rescue. A she rescued me, actually, oh. but she is, and she's the best, oh. dude. Like, my breasts swell around her. I feel like a mother they around swell. her. They swell? Oh. <laughs> they don't. Mine are they're... very swollen. They went up a cup size. Jeez <laughs> Louise. What's your biggest deal breaker? No, I, I feel like it's just, like, not not a good human. It's a, it's a big deal That's a deal big breaker. deal breaker. Yeah. Okay, last one. Because you're a pretty big deal, and I only have pretty big deals on my show. What's a pretty big deal to you right now? Ooh. Besides your dog. Besides <laughs> my dog. <laughs> um, going back to our conversation about having um, just equal representation behind the camera, behind the scenes, but also in front of the scenes yes. in Hollywood. That's been a big like topic of conversation with anybody that I've talked to recently. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy to be that. Yes, it's be very important. <laughs> yeah. Liza Koshy, thank you so much for thank coming you. on. You're just a breath of fresh air. <gasps> Thank you. I smell a little hot today, so that's really nice you say no, that. No, I had a sweater on over this, and I was like, it is not sweater weather in L.A. Yo, I did that thing where you only wear a jacket and nothing underneath it, so I'm like, I committed hard. I don't know. Blow down I'm the not shirt. not blowing anything down there. <laughs> it's just a wool. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> don't forget to join the conversation on social. Follow Pretty Big Deal on Instagram and Twitter. And send us all your questions and comments. We want to hear from you.